everyone. Welcome to SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. And here's our podcast. For the Realistic SLP. Welcome! Oh, look, we did that together. We're awesome. (laughs) Cheers to that. That's right. Our life is speech and we're okay with that. Understanding, language comprehension, expressive output. And then also you're teaching them like syntactically correct sentences. Right. Work smarter, not harder. Right. The first step is just how to communicate. Trying to help people to, you know, improve their speech language communication neurons that fire together, wire together. I like that. That's really genius. We yeah. need to choose that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I unless we, we could just, I can put an old one on. Oh, um, they're in my car. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, um, like I literally in bed so hi <laughs> hey girls how are you good can you oh, see and see hear you. us i can yes okay, wonderful Gosh. okay lovely you you like you blah blah shirt yeah, i know maria you know, was just commenting on it i literally like i didn't go to work today so i oh. um like i this is what i've been in all day it's just coincidental but i am like con- i'm trying to sell all the mediums Right. So I am wearing it every opportunity I get. <laughs> I didn't. I just worked out, and so I just threw on a jacket and took my hair out of a ponytail. Oh, good I'm for nice. you! I did not work out. I did not. No, <laughs> I have not. I haven't worked out in a while. Actually, I used to be so avid, and now I don't know. I got out of the the mode, but I'll get back in once I put on all that Christmas weight. <laughs> January. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get started just because this thing will kick us off because we don't pay for it. So it's like at a 40 minute limit or whatever. Um, but if, you know, something happens, I'll just send you another link and then we'll fix that that way. Um, but just like the outline that I sent you, um, you have, are you prepared about the wine? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're going to do intro <laughs> and then wine and cheese. Maria will talk about our wine and cheese. Yes. And then you'll talk about whatever you have. Do you have a snack or anything? I have wine. Okay, oh, wine no. Yeah, whatever. I mean, like, you don't have to. There's no real rules here. Um, I also have, like, club soda because I've had plenty of drinks last night, and I don't want any more. Um, <laughs> but then we're going to do um, – I'm going to read the, the bio that's from your website, or Maria can. Well, yeah, I guess yeah. I will since you just did the cheese, wine and cheese. Okay. And then Maria will read the this or that, and then you're going to talk to us about, like, um, your journey to here. Then we'll have like a halfway point where we do housekeeping and you can plug anything that you have, like your AAC Academy or your Instagram or anything like that. Um, and then we're going to get to the main segments after the halfway point, And that'll be using AAC at home and in school. And then um, I know you also do the Stella and Dot styling, right? So I thought that it would be fun to talk about that and how like, Cause sometimes like if I have new makeup or a new outfit or something, like it's just easier to wake up in the morning and get ready to go. Yeah. So we, we can do a little bit of that. Then we have tips and tricks, which, um, yep. And I don't know if you've listened before, but we end usually like with a tip or a trick that you can use tomorrow. Like something that you can do with your own physical self, not something that like requires purchasing or prep. And then we like to end on a quote. And when we have a guest, we like when the, Jess tells us a quote that kind of inspires them. So if you have one, you can share it. Oh, I read the email, so I'm ready. Wonderful. Yeah, okay. okay, so she knows. So and will we do drink it or sink it for your wine? Oh, right. Yes. So I, I rarely it. ever sink anything. Right. <laughs> we could talk about that, you know, depths like that. I'm right. A little, I don't know. I like yeah, she's got a more refined palate. More refined That's what she just palette. wanted to say. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get started. Okay. In three, two. I'm sorry, I'm a little sick, so I'm just like, <laughs> hold on. Like, I don't want to make my headphone easel too much. Okay. In three, okay. two, one. We're back with another episode. I'm Deb. I'm Maria. And welcome our beautiful guest, Ann Page. Welcome. welcome. Say hey, hi. 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 Thanks for doing the podcast yes. with us. We're so excited to have you. I am so happy to be here. Great. So we'll get right into it. We're having some wine and cheese. Oh, I didn't even sit my wine oh, yet. Yeah, cheers. So cheers. Oh, we'll do a virtual cheers. Yeah, virtual cheers. Oh, we're looking at red too. Oh, so we both good. have, we all have red wine here, all okay. three of us. 
What we're drinking over here is J Lore. I don't know what that what that is. I never heard of that one before. Okay. But it's a uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. I hope I you're getting, that you're getting good at that. I'm getting that good there. Yeah. yeah. The 2016. It's quite vintage. <laughs> it's a good year for the wine. And uh, it's characterized as dark and dense, and uh, has aromas of black currant, blueberry, and cherry. But I wouldn't say it's like overwhelming with those flavors. I think it's just the right amount. So I like this. And I we, think it's pretty dense. Yeah. We pair it with fruit and cheese. Fruit and cheese, which mm. brings out like the fruitiness in the wine, I think. Yeah. I'm sticking with vitamin C because I'm a little bit sick. Oh, so you're having oranges. Yeah, we have oranges, apples, Blueberries, raspberries, and mozzarella cheese. Because yeah. I feel like I didn't have enough vitamins recently. Right. So we're just going to drink it. And Getting all the vitamins in. Right. Perfect. So what do you think about this? Drink it or sink it? I would drink it. I mean, I wouldn't put it on my top of my, like, right. gotta have this wine Yeah. List, it's but. not like, you know that amazing but i think it's pretty good it kind of makes my left eye close when i sip it interesting <laughs> i don't know what it is it's a little bit intense <laughs> i kind of like it i think it like hits your palate and it's like whoa that's a nice intense flavor which is what it's saying it is an intense for. flavor maybe the mozzarella will mellow it out yeah, actually, this says 2016 was a good year for wine. <laughs> um, <laughs> While pre season and early rain season rains were short of average, the timing was ideal for vine health and wine quality in 2016. Nice. What, so, are, what are you drinking, yeah, what Anne? Are you drinking? Well, I am drinking an old vine Zinfandel okay. called Gen 5. Yeah. And it's from Lodi, California. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. It's L-O-D-I. I think it's yeah, Lodi. I think, so. I think I've heard about that. And it's a little um, younger wine than yours. It's a 2017. Oh, okay. oh not as good of a year for it's, wine. It's like, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So um, did you vote drink it or sink it for your wine? I'm going to vote drink it. I had some last night, too, with my husband, and we both really liked it. So. All right. I really like your wine glass. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. We keep breaking ours, and so these are the two that we have. They're new, and we haven't broken them yet. Oh, good. That is the nice thing about, like, I mean, it's sad when you break your wine glasses, but then you get new ones mm -hmm. frequently because they are so easily broken. Yeah, and an excuse to and keep them. like, hey. Don't tell anybody, but it's not me that breaks them. <laughs> okay. All right. You will. I'm sure it's not. Yeah. <laughs> This is also a, a complaint about the person who should do the dishes with you. <laughs> yeah. That's our other, that's a segment that we, we come across sometimes. So um, getting to know Anne, I'm going to tell everyone a little bit about you, if you don't mind. Um, right. Anne is a heart-centered SLP educator and creator dedicated to helping take the fear out of AAC. She has a website devoted to sharing ideas, tips, and resources that help you not only SLP like a boss, but AAC like a boss too. She puts the fun back in functional. That is such a sweet bio. Huh? That's great that you put the fun back in functional. I like that. <laughs> Maria's got kind of a this or that game yes. for you so that we can get to know you. And so, I'm going to kick my dog out right. while she does that. So even though that was a really great intro, we want to get to know uh, another side of you, maybe a sign that maybe we don't get to see that much. So these are just like some fun questions and you could try to answer as quickly as you can. Not Try not to think about it too much. Okay. I won't right. overthink it. Yeah. Don't overthink it. Just go with it. All right, ready? So it's called this or that, and you're going to just pick which answer. So, number one, holiday break or summer break? Summer break. Okay, silver jewelry or gold? Gold. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay, swimming or sunbathing? Sun, well, sunbathing gives you cancer, but yeah, uh -huh. sunbathing. Okay, all right. I can't swim very well. It's hard to get past that. Yeah. You want to get tan. Yeah, that's all right. We're getting there. <laughs> it's, all right, jogging or hiking? Hiking. Okay, red or white wine? Definitely red. Okay, soft cheese or a hard cheese? These are so easy. Definitely hard cheese. Okay. Wow. Singing or dancing? Dancing, because I'm a terrible singer. 
Okay, I'm I'm with you on that one. I'm Mom, a terrible dancer. <laughs> you're that one the opposite. I <laughs> 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 Mike Mark. says I'm getting the bad vibes away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, money or fame? Money. Mm -hmm. Splurge on breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Okay. Cactus yeah. or flowers? Oh, that's hard because I live in Arizona. I, 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 did I messed up the last this or that. Oh. I didn't mess it up. I just, you know, wow. didn't have a course. I'm impressed. Yeah, well, she, she wasn't here, so I had to throw her under the bus. Yes. <laughs> to, I'm going to go flowers. I love flowers. Yeah. There's cactus flowers, though, right? Yes. Yes. So you can pick that answer too if you like. <laughs> DJ or a band? To be? Or to, to, or to listen to? Band. Okay. Cake or donuts? Um, gosh, donuts if they're like the really good ones. Gotcha. Cook at home or dine out? Duh, dine out. All right. Ice or hot coffee? Hot. Okay. Hoop earrings or studs? Definitely hoop. I like big stuff. Uh-huh. Bruce Willis or Harrison Ford? Might go with Bruce. Okay. Rock or country? Definitely rock. Okay. Massage or a facial? A facial because I'm getting older. I like <laughs> facials too. International or domestic travel? Definitely. I want more international. Okay, me too, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I like <laughs> traveling. I guess I like being there, but the journey is just not for me. So that's really? I actually like the journey too. I like being on a plane. Really? I hate being, as soon as I walk into the airport, I have a panic attack. I'm like, we're going to miss the flight. We're going to lose our baggage. They're not going to let me on. Oh. It's going to be the wrong gate. Like, it's just What happened uh, to the positive thinking? No, it goes away. It's really? gone. I walk through the, the airport oh. and then all the positive energy. That's why you stop at the bar and have a yes. glass of wine. Exactly. Yes. And then you fall asleep on the airplane. Yeah. yeah. I, I do like to grab a cocktail before a flight. Yeah. But I wonder if there are people getting on a flight now listening to this. Maybe. Like, Safe flight. Yeah. Don't write to us if you are. <laughs> All right. So we want to talk about. I want to know. Yeah. yeah. We want to know, Anne, about your journey, about how <laughs> what we call this segment started from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> wherever here is. Yeah, wherever here is. <laughs> so you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the field and just, you know. Pretty much anything you want to share, we're here to listen. Sure. Well, it was a, pr a very roundabout kind of a journey. I started out as an art major, mm -hmm. and then I... I want to um, stop you. Like a art, like like studying the history of art, or being... No, like an artist, like a fine, a fine art. So I was doing wow. um, drawing and painting and sculpting and all wow. of that. And then I got about two years through, and then I thought, well, how am I going to make any money at this? And which is not to say that you can't, but I just, I just couldn't really see it happening for me. Right. And so then I was looking at maybe being a teacher, but I couldn't see myself in front of a classroom of kids. Yes. And then somebody told me about speech um, pathology, which I had not, honestly, hadn't really ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. And so why don't you check you know have a look at that and um so i did and i took a uh, an audiology class and a speech i can't remember what i took but i was like wow this is really fascinating mm -hmm. and so it kept my interest uh and because i used to get bored well i still do i get bored easily and so uh it really kept my interest and i really liked the science part of it and i liked the um, the working with people part of it. And so I got my degree. I got a dual major in speech pathology and audiology. Oh. And then that was a long time ago. And back when that, you didn't have to have a master's degree yet, but that was the year that the second I got my bachelor's degree, they said, Oh, guess what? You have to have a master's degree now. And I was really tired of going to school. And so I took a little break and uh, decided I wanted to work at an office and wear like pencil skirts and cute shoes. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I did that and I ended up working for that company for the next, I think like eight years, I got into marketing. Wow. And 
um, shopping center marketing for several years and then moved to Canada, did more art, and then finally came back to Arizona in 2006 and uh, found I was looking for a job. I needed to have a job and I needed one fast. And I saw an ad that said that you could work as a speech path with a bachelor's degree in the schools here. And so I got that job. And, uh, and then I thought, well, I better get my master's degree now. Cause this is like the last, there's only two States left that you can do that. So I could kind of read the writing on the wall. Right. And so I, um, I worked and got my um, master's degree online th through Nova Southeastern University out of Florida. Yeah, I know uh, I had one of my students, a uh, grad student, and she went there. She's yeah, it, w it really worked for me, the online thing, um, just as, uh, as an adult student and uh, because I needed to work, it worked out really well. well so, crazy. and I always wonder like, is taking online, is it, is it a little bit more difficult to, to understand things when you don't have somebody there to do the, the question and answer? Or do, does it like make up for itself in that way? Well, each one of the classes you had to sign in for an hour for like a group, um, like a lecture. So it, it would depend on the instructor usually there. And they had these um, like chat, I think they were like chat room things that were set up. So you could have some interaction and uh, it worked, it worked fine for me because there was enough videos and um, interaction, except the only part that was tricky was the AAC part. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> and I went to, I ended up, there was a cohort of students in LA, which is not that far away from Phoenix. And so I flew there for an intense, um, three day weekend of like 10 hour a day AAC classes wow. and we could, you know, have hands on. Oh, wow. That's, that's so amazing. is that, is that how you started your passion for AAC? Yeah. Yeah. And what, well, that was part of it. Um, and also actually before that, when I was working in the school, uh, while I was going to school, I was working with a lot of the kids that I work with now. I've been at the same, uh, in the same district for the last, I think, I think it's been 11 years now. Wow. Maybe, yeah, I think 11 years. And so I was working with kids with complex communication needs with very little support. And that was when I was like, I need to know some stuff. And so I would look it up and I would ask people and they would just give me the tech part. And I, that's not the hard part. The heart, I'm like, okay, I understand how to use the device, but how do I actually get the child to use it? And how do I actually get the adults in his environment to use it? Exactly. Yes. And that's when I started getting super interested in it. Wow. Yeah, I feel like it's something that not everyone is exposed to, and it's like a huge element of fear for many speech pathologists. Maria works with AAC. Yes. Yeah. Um, I yeah. don't. I'm mm -hmm. in uh, gen ed. So although all of my students, they have IEPs, they don't have complex communication issues. Right. I um, see what you were this saying. Year, this year, I'm working with all kiddos that have uh, Oh, wow. Needs. Yeah. A lot of mine have uh, AC devices, or we just have the ones like programmatic, like are in the speech room, and we're trialing different things. And um, so I guess we'll talk about AAC in the school. Um, some challenges we've seen were like the like just like technical things like it's not working, it's not charged, it's in their desk and it's not out on the table. Um, so like those are some of the challenges that I see. I don't know if you feel the same way. Uh, you definitely. Yeah. I think it's like universal and yeah. it's because yeah, I talk to I talk to a lot of people too, like through social media and through um, my AAC Academy and it seems like that's one of the biggest challenges that we face is it, just getting over that fear of uh, using like and a lot of the SLPs just because they 
maybe they were working in a different placement and they didn't have to use AAC and they maybe only had one class in grad school, if that, and then all of a sudden they get a new caseload where they have a whole room full of kids and they, they, you know, they panic and, uh, and there's, and then they have to try and get the teachers to use it and the staff to use it and the kids to use it. And so there's just a lot of resistance and fear. Yes. Yes, I also feel like in all of the instances that I have had with AAC, I've, for the most part, it's always been um, a client that I don't have for very long, whether it's because I see them for summer services, so I'm just the person that gets them for those three months, or if it's because they're preschool age and they have to be evaluated for a device still. I've never had like a kid with a device. <laughs> and like kept them on my caseload for uh, a year. But what I did experience in the time that I did spend with those children with devices, I just felt so overwhelmed. It's like there's pages and pages of things and there are just so many options and icons that I felt like I needed, if I was going to be productive with that device, I was gonna have to take it home with me <laughs> and like change it because when you go in to see somebody for 45 minutes twice a week or 30 minutes twice a week, you like, it's a struggle to like work on programming a device when you're trying to interact with the individual that you're with. So that was the challenge that I had, even with PECS I had, I talked about right. when we had an episode, there's this family, they were just so wonderful. They had binders and binders of like all these pecs pictures and I was like I don't even know what I think me and Ann are just like no <laughs> like in our head we're just like no so many things we got to say about that but I guess I'll let Ann go first well I I think it's natural like when you first get a kiddo and they have a device and you look at it and there's all those yes. little squares you're like this is way too much they uh -huh. can't access this but they can. And right. that's the thing that, um, cause I did, I, I did this. I hate to even say I did this, but I'm pretty sure everybody does it at some point. You're like, Oh no, no, no. Let's just give them four. Right. Schools. Yeah. Let's start them off with four big ones so they can yeah. see them. And then once they get that, then we'll add to it. But then you, you're taking out that whole motor planning piece because then they're going to have to learn a whole nother uh, motor plan when you stick that, you know, all of a sudden they were used to these four, which is so limiting to only have four words that you can say. And it, it's better to screen out some of the words, like to just like leave them there. But if it's overwhelming while you're trying to teach something, almost all of the devices have a way that you can um, just Find like them. screen them out. Right. And so then yeah. you maybe you will just pick like I don't know, however many, maybe you only want to focus on six. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, I think, don't you think Maria, that's like a super yeah. common thing. That's, I've done that before myself. So I'm right there with you, Ann. Um, but it was like years ago, not recently. Yeah, no, no it wasn't last year. Or no, it wasn't like no. yesterday, you know, it was like a couple of years ago <laughs> where I was like, oh, this is too much. And then I kind of learned the hard way where I was like, oh, now I'm going to add adjectives now. And then I'm like, oh, and even I couldn't find where that folder was. So if I was lost. Actually, the student found it easier than I did. <laughs> um, that's good. Yeah. I ended, up, um, I ended up making a file of all the animals at first. That was like the first thing I did. And then we would sing Old McDonald's had a farm and we would choose the animals. And that was like, that was like the first thing I came up with. I was like, you know, I don't know what to do here. And I uh, know yeah. I just want to help and interact. So that's what we were going to do. And then, um, it, then it was over because it was summer, it was over, and then they went back to their regular SLP, or they went from transitioning from preschool to kindergarten. Yeah, I think like now that uh, there's a trend, and I think it's a really healthy trend towards using a lot of core vocabulary, because it it's um, research-based, and it's so functional, and it goes across all environments, and then uh, I think if you blend a little bit of real specific fringe vocabulary, which is um, fringe, I know you guys know this, but I'll just say it. Yeah, just no, good yeah. The fringe vocabulary would be the more specific words, like nouns, 
that are in the child's environment. So maybe like the name of their favorite toy or their, you know, some of their friends. But um, when you're teaching those core words, then, and you're teaching them, um, you're teaching them across uh, different uses of language. So you're right. teaching them to comment, not just to request and label. Right. You're teaching yeah. them to comment and how to refuse and, pardon? I said to initiate also. Yeah, yeah. So it's just you get so much more bang for your buck with the core vocabulary. I agree. I've been seeing a lot more, um, even on, like just on Instagram. <laughs> but, you know, in research, they are talking more and more about core. And I think that's definitely helping the field because um, I think now as SLPs, we're like, all right, let's think more of like core vocabulary rather than like these binders of fringe words, which really are just that I think is scarier. Maybe that's why everyone's so scared. Too much yeah. fringe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, everyone would be overwhelmed if we only did fringe. <laughs> so we're trying to get rid of that. And I've even had like teachers come to me and I think it's in a way great because at least they're coming to me and they want to use the device and like, can you program it to say all our words? And I'm like, no, you know, like, and I'm just like, no, that's really great that you want to use it. And I like that. But like, why don't you just use like next page, you know, and like, let's just work on those two. And like, that's it. I'm like, yeah, just, you know, while you're reading your book, you know, have that child say next page, press it, approximate it. And then you turn the page and now they're engaged in a lesson. You know, you don't have to get too crazy about making a whole thing. Because every week you're going to have a new book. Do you want to be doing every new week, like a whole program on his device? Like, <laughs> no, nobody has time to do that. Because yeah. especially the back of their books will have like some of their words and they could point to those words. You know, that could be like your fringe words can be like specific. Yeah. yeah. And they can just use like look or to point out something yeah. that they see or my turn. Mm hmm. And you like exactly. to speak a lot about, um, I see it on your Instagram page and many other pages about um, the real key to teaching AAC is modeling it. So like while you're speaking, are you saying that like in conjunction with, with verbal language or do you try to just mostly use the board as the individual would? I, I think it's a, a big deal now to use, you are, using AAC to teach AAC. So you want to, because the example that I give to teachers and parents is that I typically, like a typically developing child, a baby, like how many times do they hear the word mama before they say mama? Thousands and thousands and thousands. And so we're asking these kids to point and how many times are they seeing someone else point? Right. Not many unless we're doing it. And so that's why it's so important for us to uh, to be like talking and pointing at the same time and making it simple like you don't have to point like if they're a beginner you do not have to point to every single word because right. it will be really hard because you're not going to know where they're at but pick a couple right. if that's the gist of it and then that's going to really help them yeah that's an excellent point I got to use that one I'm going to put that one in my back good one huh that's a good one yeah so I. I want to, in my future, have more cases that I would require AAC just so that I can get that experience of the, working with the individual, but then also having the skill base to help them be able to communicate. So that's a goal of mine moving forward. But currently, I don't. It's not. It's like my empty toolbox. It's like <laughs> AAC. It's like my missing puzzle piece. I don't. I don't like, I, I have like the least amount of experience in it and um, I just want to learn more stuff that I can do. So I've been taking classes on like MedBridge and stuff and I um, took one course that was about how um, trying to make an AAC program that's a little bit more dynamic so that the child has the opportunity or the individual has the opportunity to like talk personally about themselves rather than like everything being uh like an icon like something that says like like what they like in their hobbies and stuff but and that was interesting okay. to me but i guess like obviously we have to start off with the core language mm -hmm. so that we can even understand one the function of language and yeah. how to communicate with the device right but then two so that you can progress to more complex type of right and i think it's important too to um once they get like some of those core words going is to have like uh, a page for them of 
comments and quick phrases because I have found that I've been lucky enough to work with a couple of kiddos that are getting more proficient on their device. And um, I have like one girl that is in, she's in gen ed and she's using a device oh, because wow. she has um, an unrepaired submucous cleft. Oh, and so wow. it's not intelligible, but it's been super interesting because she can't communicate on her device as quick as she can think. And I see that frustration mm -hmm. and I see the frustration in her communication partners too. And right. so that's when I think having some things pre-programmed that she says a lot, you know, like, Hey, what's up or yeah. things like that to help speed things along. It's a whole nother consideration. Right. Because that's another um, thing too. I've had an experience with if like um, for social interactions, if it is taking them too long to access it, sometimes we do have to like, you know, kind of, like you said, pre-program it or have on folder that it's right there, just yeah. something because then you, then the listener like might lose interest, especially if they're, you know, if they have complex communication needs as well. So that's like another point too, to think about. Yeah, exactly. With that. <laughs> So, I always, I, well, sorry, what were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, no, I was just, I was going to say about the home and how oh, yeah. you see at home, because it seems like we're talking about school, but go ahead. Um, I don't even remember what oh, I was going to say. Really? I wanted yeah. to say, I don't know. <laughs> that was like um, two minutes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like my, well, I also <laughs> got distracted by all the laughing right. behind me. See? That's our Because point. there's another podcast recording. Right. So I was like, what are they laughing well, about? Well, that, that goes along with our point that we yeah. got to communicate, because sometimes our listener, you know, we yes. She doesn't always pay attention. <laughs> right. um, oh, then that was the other experience that I had with AAC. Um, so I was at a wedding and I was like uh, singing a lot at the wedding because I was like just dancing around and singing. <laughs> and then the next day I had no voice. So I um, used the app Verbal Me. Yes. <laughs> you, are you familiar with Verbal Me? And it's like, uh -uh. A free, like it's like a free communication app. And it basically has like colors, yes, no, and like, it has a keyboard and you can like create phrases that you would say and then hit the phrase. Um, so basically I used it while I um, had no funny. voice and I, it was so frustrating to me because um, a lot of times people were not giving me enough opportunity to speak. So it's like I'm putting all this effort in to say something and they're like cutting me off. <laughs> Or, like, asking me more questions, and I'm like, I'm trying to answer your first question still. That's an excellent point. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was what I wanted to say. Yeah. Good, good, good point. Yeah. But so, so uh, glad you what, ad that. Yeah, what advice do you give to when you're teaching people to use it? Like, to look for shortcuts, I think. For um, I went to a, uh, a Lamp Words for Life training. Oh, okay. And it was really good, and it was by the, um, what's his name? John Halloran, the, the, I don't know if this is the right, the inventor. I don't know that you would say that, but anyway, he and his wife are the ones that kind of came up with that whole, with the lamp words. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 Sorry, what we heard words for life lamp oh stop that's our halfway that's point. our halfway point you could wrap wrap up the um, point and yeah go into other stuff. oh go ahead sorry so, oh for john um john halloran he's a really dynamic really passionate speaker and he brought he's been working with a lot of uh, people of students for like a long period of time so like from the time they were teenagers to adults and so he would show videos of some of them being really successful and they they were people with really um intense physical limitations but he taught them shortcuts and so you know if i can't remember what some of the words were but even if you put the two words together if they sounded like what they were trying to say it was a big shortcut for them and so they, he was an advocate of them doing that because of um, how it speeds up the communication. Right, yeah, right. that's a good point. And then also there's gotta be an element to it where you have to do counseling with parents and teachers and anyone in the individual's life where you're like, okay, so you're gonna need to allow more time for this person to speak and create more opportunities for them to use their device and 
and hold them accountable for making sure it's charged and mm-hmm. and used at home. Oh, now we're going into home too. So that was my other right. question. We'll do that after the halfway point. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do our halfway point. Uh, so, and just tell everyone where they could find you on Instagram, your website, all that. Oh. If you mind oh. looking first as our guest. I, uh, my favorite social media is Instagram for sure. And I'm there as beautiful speech life. And then I also have another account for, um, fashion. My uh, style one is called what the SLP wore. And and then I, um, I'm also on Facebook as beautiful speech life and I have a blog and a website and that's kind of the best way to get a hold of me, beautiful speech life. And I have, uh, my newly formed, well, not that new now, it's been since May, uh, AAC Academy that's going really well and that I'm really proud of, and you can find out about that. There's links on my Instagram. Yes, I'm very interested okay. in signing up because then you'll be my AAC teacher. <laughs> I would. I would be your AAC cheerleader. And yeah. Go. Okay. That? Well, that's, and that's, yeah, that's, it seems, I was reading um, on your website, I was reading your blogs, and I, I read the, the one about the um, the AAC Academy and like just how you broke it down and everything that you would be able to get from it. And it seems like so helpful. I try to make it so that I, I tried to make it what I wished I would have had right. 10 years ago. Right. That's great. I think that's very helpful. Um, our Instagram is at SLP's Wine and Cheese Pod, underscore between each word. Also like us, review our podcast on iTunes, and we still have shirts left, blah, blah, blah yeah, shirts. mostly so, pink medium. Yeah, pink medium. So if pink you're thinking medium. if you should get a shirt, you should say yes. Yeah, send us an email, let us know. I'll send you a PayPal invoice, and uh, uh, maybe Maria or myself will mail it to you. One of okay, us yes. Yeah. I I'm mail a, mailing's hard work. I can mail. <laughs> yeah. I can mail. It is hard work. I was just talking about that with some of our my friends today. We said that going to the post office is one of our very least favorite things. <laughs> oh my goodness! I and know. it also is not open during the times. Other, than, it's only open during work times. Do people take off of work to go to the post office? No. It's it's amazing. So then I go to the UPS store, sure. which is also like. A, a mob scene right. at this point. It's just packages everywhere. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, if somebody were to rob this place, they would make out pretty good. There's yeah. just like every single Amazon box, like it, you're probably going to hit strike gold. Not that right. I'm advocating for yeah, robbery. No, we're not. No. We're just advocating for you to get a shirt. Yes. So we can just, you know, <laughs> go to the post office and just appreciate life. Make that sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll meet some cool people at the post office. Like, well, we should do some interviews in there. Like, hey, did you take off of work to come here? No, yeah, I would be like, what are you like to know? Do you enjoy hell on earth? (laughs) (laughs) That's what this is. I checked into the post office and they labeled it hell on earth on Facebook. I like changed the location. (laughs) Yeah, it's so bad. And then I looked and I was like, oh, they all have bad reviews, this post office. Yeah. So that's why, though. Right. Anywho, that's all we want to plug, right? Our, our oh, Patreon. Patreon. Yes, check out our Patreon. We're going to have videos of what would you do with that. Yes. Coming up. And available so. uh, principles and uh, premium podcast episodes. Yes. And now we're back on topic. Yes. AAC at home. So we were saying pretty much you have to have the conversation of the ownership and responsibility of the device, like charging it, bringing it to school, using it at home, leaving it out. Uh, do you have uh, parent trainings? Do you have anything like that you work with the parents with and how do you go I about have, I have, yeah, it's, it, it's really, I find that super challenging as well, to be uh-huh. honest. Um, I have a, a lot of times I find that parents are already overwhelmed because yeah. they have a child with um, complex communication needs uh-huh. and it's like one more thing for them to do and yeah. it, it, they sometimes they just would prefer not to do it and let us do it uh-huh. and so it just is a lot of encouragement because you can't make somebody do it but it's a lot of encouraging and saying how about you just try this like uh-huh. how about you just try um, a lot of times I'll meet and say okay can you just think of five 
minutes in a day that you could um, make the AAC part of what you're doing with your family. Like maybe is there a time that you sit down and read or maybe when he brushes his teeth or oh, that's when you're loading the dishwasher, you know, like just like try and think of something that is doable and then I'll give them a couple of words that they could practice during that activity. Like say if it was loading the dishwasher, it would be like putting it in, in, yeah. in that they could put in the silverware or, yeah. um, you know, or, yeah, or folding the clothes or putting, yeah, clothes in the laundry or when they're reading the turn the page thing. Right. Wow, All of I like that. Things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that tip. <laughs> it, and then um, I have done a parent group before. Um, I don't have any going right now. I would like to get some going again. And, um, like, yeah, it's, it's tricky. And, and for an SLP in the field, it's one more thing. But I think it's an important one if we can just even get a conversation going right. and, yeah. and you know, kind of try and work together and say, hey, look, this is what he can do yeah. at school. Maybe he can do that at home, too. Right. No, that's great. So I talk about this on the podcast a lot. Um, my boyfriend, Mike, he has a brother who is 28 now, and he um, he would be... I don't, he's not nonverbal. He does, he doesn't say very many things spontaneously, but he can repeat probably up to three to four words. Um, and he has a couple of phrases that if you prompt him, he can say. Um, but I just think it's so heartbreaking that he didn't get a device as a child. Mm -hmm. And I know it's hard now that he's older because not only, I'm not saying like it's harder for an older person to learn. That's not even like my concern. My concern would be like because habits have developed and because like um, he is used to a certain way of things and how um, like I just don't know like if he would tolerate learning it but I feel like I want him to have something more than what he has like because I do see he becoming him becoming increasingly frustrated right. does he have an ipad you can download some free apps and try it he doesn't have an ipad he likes to sit at the computer with headphones on okay but like in terms of carrying around a device i've never seen him do that with with his hands he likes to carry pens a lot and okay. he'll have he likes to have um twist ties Okay. in his hands so I guess he likes the way it feels and the way it looks so that would be a whole thing like even getting him to not be holding these things right and to hold a device like I'm not even talking about like using the device I'm like right. like even yeah so that's not like he, he does have like the fine motor skills because we color together and he can type and he can write and read I but, think he would be a good candidate I don't know I think you I think if he can do those things and he could write and read and he's interested in the computer usually when they have that interest I think you can get them interested in a device I don't know that's what I think I don't know what does Ann think <laughs> I think so too and I think now with iPads if I mean it you wouldn't want to start out with uh, him carrying it around because that sounds like that would be really challenging for him but I feel like if you could find like one instance during yeah. his day too that he was more motivated to communicate maybe he could uh, use it and then some of the a lot of the apps now are access are web-based and they're accessible on the computer where he could use the mouse. He, he depending on his computer he could interface with his finger or use the mouse and they're getting more affordable like there's one now that I just saw for forgot what it was because it's late at night but it was only $49.99 for uh, for the app so it's not like you have to spend thousands like you used to yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that must also be so daunting to be like oh I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars on this thing and I don't even know right, right? you don't even know if it's gonna work it's gonna work yeah I think what would work for him is if he had one of the bracelets too. Like I like when I, when I see the, the bracelets that have the pec symbols on it, I don't know how you feel about having something on his wrist, but like that could be, I think a good technique for him. I you just start with some visuals like, or some stuff like that just to get him, I guess, like used to it. What's the oldest client that you've ever introduced a new 
device to? Mm, yeah, it would be for me young because I work in the school. So probably like 12. Yeah. Okay, but that's still not that young. That's like... Yeah. Well, and if you think about like people that are working in SNFs and you're, when someone has a stroke and so you're in, you're showing them AAC at, you know, at whatever age, like in their seventies or eighties sometimes. Right. And it's, um, a lot of it, like you mentioned before, is that motor planning. So they do learn it like a lot quicker than you might think. Cause yeah. you might not like for a, I have a kid that's like better with his device than I am because he's new to me but he's had this device for over a year so I'm like you show me where feelings are I'm like oh yeah that's right they were there and he's like quick he knows so I just let him you know go with it he's like showing me a lot of stuff too and I'm still you know learning as well but you know you'll be surprised because of that motor planning aspect so yeah it's pretty it's worth a shot I could talk about that too I have some uh so how would you incorporate using something like a feelings page or like the feelings app portion of the AT device yeah. in the home setting? Well, you could ask like, how do you feel today? That's what I did. <laughs> and he said, excited and proud. So mm -hmm. I was like, great. Mm -hmm. And then I did it a couple of times just to check that he like, you know, well, I'm like, oh, okay, how do you feel today? I was like, oh, you feel excited? All right. And I just wanted to make sure because this was new today. And I was like, tell me one more time. I forgot. How do you feel today? And then he said proud. I was like, oh, okay, great. So I just wanted to make sure because he was having a hard time. So I was like, let's ask him how he's feeling. So. Well, and I feel like with our younger kids, feelings have to be taught. Yes. That's exactly. a whole other vocabulary that's abstract. Yes. That be kind of systematically taught. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and I feel like for for him once again, like feelings are something that he struggles with, and I don't even think he could identify because he doesn't even know why he gets so upset. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. See, somewhere I can't remember where I saw this, but I thought it was a really good idea where uh, they were kind of talking the kiddo through something, and they would say, uh, "I okay, I see that." right now you have tears coming out of your eyes and your face is red and you have you are frowning that makes me think that you're sad and then they're pointing to the sad and so then if they do that kind of every time then yeah. then maybe they can start to get that understanding kind of like incidental when it comes up right <laughs> so yeah. yeah actually labeling the characteristics on your face and then having like a display next to you and identifying that eye contact yeah. Icon. Yeah. yeah yeah or i see you're throwing all of your toys at all the other kids <laughs> they're frustrated they're yeah. frustrated i know i have a kid sorry i'm like chewing this apple that was having a hard time and I guess he just wanted to go back to class. And I was like, no, you're going to tell me frustrated. And then I, <laughs> he could calm down after that. I was like, all right, let's relax, you know. And I just had him push it like a couple of times to show him this is how you're feeling. So instead of throwing, we're going to at least approximate this word or touch this word. Yeah, yeah. That's how you teach feelings in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> when they're feeling them. When they're right. <laughs> Okay, so what's your favorite AA? I want to know both of you, like, oh, like one of your, each of your favorite AAC activities to, oh, okay. to do, like, what's your, like, in your arsenal? Well, for what age? <laughs> so who wants to go first, by the way? Should I go? I'll just go first. Yeah, you go first. Man. I'll let Anne just relax, have her wine. <laughs> yeah. Are you, like, younger, like, early? Whoever it is, okay. I don't know. Whoever's think about arsenal. what I did today. Um, <laughs> I like um, go and stop. Uh, I'm kind of, I like more, but I feel like I'm kind of just kind of like, ah, over more. <gasps> like more what? Yeah, like just more. I'm like, it's good. It definitely is good. And they're motivated and they pick it up really quickly. So I like it for that. It's like quick, it's like, um, beginning therapy activity. Um, but I like go and stop. So like I had this, uh, toy today and then it like spins the dinosaur and it spins. And then, um, we would do stop. And then I would pair with a visual of hands down to learn to wait and then um, go. And then they would have to press go and then push the thing, spin, stop, wait. And then um, the teacher actually does it in class too where we pass a ball around like hot potato and she has the visuals of go and stop. So I feel like go and stop are like a good place to start 
because they're like easy and you can use them with like anything. And then the teachers I've noticed are very willing to use go and stop because it's like, all right, I got this. I can do go and I can do stop. So I like go and stop. And then I have another game we do in another class where we pass around like a sensory bin and they have to fish out their sight words and like they scoop them out and then that's what we do we have music going and then go and then when the music stops they hit stop and then whoever has the device will say it on their device so i just i like it i, don't know, I like go and stop <laughs> so what do you think about that and <laughs> i love it i love go and stop too go I and use, stop right i i use go a lot because you can just do it with so many things and you can do it across all ages and you know, with the older kids, maybe just make it a little bit more age appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I like that. And then lately I have really been liking my turn and I do for my I do, group. yes. I feel like I was doing a lot of I do last year with my students. This year I don't have, I have a little bit younger, so I'm doing more, like I know I do is still a core, but more like more finished. Oh, I like finished too. All yeah, done. Finished. Finished is good. Just what tell, do you do? I tell do me it. when you're finished. Don't throw the toy, please. Just tell me. All right. I will remove the toy. <laughs> or they, yeah. Or I'll do it when they don't want to, um, when they don't want to give up a toy. I'll be like, okay, look, now you're finished. You're all finished. It's my turn. Yeah. And it kind of works for most of them. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I do a lot of groups, uh, whole, like push okay. groups. And uh -huh. so we do a lot of my turn um, with real yeah. quick activities to keep their attention. Uh -huh. A lot of um, I do. I'll be like, "Who wants magic?" And they oh. got my magic wand, and then they'll be like, "I do." Oh, I do. That's great. And then what I do is good for bingo too. Sorry, oh. idea. Oh, bingo! Who yeah, has, like you who have has blank? And then I do. So just oh. oh, and you could do like a guessing game too, like or who has the cat or something, yeah. like if everyone had a picture of something or a toy. Like Zingo and for Zingo. I never it's played Zingo. It's Bingo it's with a Zing. Oh. That's what it is. Really? That's, <laughs> that's a, what the logo is. Is that its marketing strategy? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. that's clever. Isn't it? Um, what is the most complex um, AAC activity you've done? Like, the thing that keeps popping into my head, like, do you ever get to the, like the sector of speeches or like telling a whole story or something mm -hmm. like that? I've done that a while ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would, what did you do? I just had to program it, honestly, um, because yeah, <laughs> I'm like, was that the right thing? It was a couple of years ago. In case <laughs> it wasn't. I had uh, our students put on a show, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And we had one of our students who has the device be the narrator of the show. And we programmed his device and he like loved it. So we had like the microphone to the device oh. and he knew like to push the buttons along with, but it wasn't like the whole, it was like a couple of sentences. So like right. once upon a time there was a caterpillar and then push it. And oh, okay. That's how we did it. And we practiced and he practiced at home and he, it really, he took ownership over that device. So. Uh, mine was not so successful. Oh no! Okay, mine was, mine was a fail. I'll tell it to you though. Yeah, let's. So see. I I have this student, and she uh, was. They were going to do this wax museum um, for like parent night, and each of the students was like a character, and so they had to write their little thing about their character. And then if somebody came and put a ticket in the bucket, then they would talk about who they were. They had oh, their. Okay. Little feet. So this is my girl that's un unintelligible, and so. We, she wrote it and then I pro, I took, it took me a long time too. I programmed it into her device so that all she would have to do is push what she had, the button, and she would have like two sentences per button. Right, and yes. It all done, practiced, uh -huh. and then I go to, the, I go to the thing, to the wax museum and uh -huh. she, she didn't use the device, she panicked. And so uh -huh. when they, when they came and put their thing in, she just said it and everybody politely, acted like they could understand everything she said when you could not understand one thing that she said. Oh, that's tough. It was a fail, but we tried. You know what? You tried and you had good intentions and maybe she yeah. just had like stage fright. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So going on to our other thing that you're very stylish SLP. 
Sorry, I, I had to almost right. commit a murder. Right. I don't think everyone knows. So you didn't have to bring attention oh. to that. Well, yeah, I so still, okay. I wanted to vent about how oh, I okay. wanted to commit a murder, but that's I didn't. Okay. Yeah. I'm very angry today. We're, <laughs> We're talking about being stylish. So, you know. Well, you know, stri black and white stripes. Jailbirds <laughs> aren't that stylish. I'm like, what are you doing? Right. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> what is this happening? Ah. He, did, he did say sorry, though. I so. don't care if you're sorry. <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna, be insane. I'm gonna stay out of that. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to stylish SLPs. So Anne is gonna tell us okay. all about being stylish. Well, I like, I love fashion and I like to, um, you know, I just like to keep things looking good. And so yeah. I have like a little side gig gig with Stella and Dot, mm -hmm. and um, we had a booth at ASHA, it was super yes. fun, so you guys there, Yes. Um, so I like, I, I love jewelry, and I love fashion, and so I find like you can, you know, it just makes your day a little bit better when you know that you have something cute to wear the next day, yes. and um, a new, like, a, like you can dress up, I wear a lot of times, I'll wear like a simple v-neck black t-shirt, and then oh. you just dress it up with your earrings and necklace yeah i oh and i was saying to you earlier like i feel better about my day usually when i have a new outfit to wear or i have like like recently my sister just gave me a ton of new lip glosses and um i don't usually wear too much stuff on my lips but i like these because they stay on so i've been like wearing them and like i've liked it and it's fun to like test out a new lip gloss every day. So yeah. I feel like, do you think it's easier to get ready in the morning when you have all your trinkets and stuff? Yeah, I do. I mean, and I like to, um, I know that a lot of people, when you work with kids, it's like, I can't work. I can't do that. I'm crawling right. around the floor. Well, I crawl around the floor too. And um, for the most part, I have never, and none of the kids have ever tried to rip my earrings off. That's good. Right. People always try to say that, too. That's, like, mm -hmm. everyone's number one go-to well, if someone's being, like, critical yeah. of what... Of well, stuff. I wear nice studs, and I, I like hoops, too. I'm a hoop girl, too, but I just saved my hoops for the weekend, just in case, because just that whole, like, the slit and the earlobe just really scares me. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I just wear nice... I'm still wearing my studs now, so I just wear nice studs. I mean... I like those. And then I tuck, nice. I'll tuck my necklaces. Like if I wear a longer necklace and if I'm in like with the younger kiddos, yeah, I just, I'll just tuck it in my shirt. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the long necklaces, they'll tuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is your organizational tips though? Because I feel like, so I'll buy earrings for myself or I'll buy a necklace and then I don't have a great spot to put it, so maybe I'll lose one of the earrings, mm -hmm. or like the necklaces get tangled or all ratty because I like have them like in a jewelry box, but there's no compartments. Or do you have like a fancy get up for your jewelry? Actually, I got this really cool jewelry box. It's like a, a travel one, and it's got like uh, little trays that you can stack stuff under and then it's got a spot for the necklaces that on the lid there's like a loop and you can loop the necklace through and then the chain um, goes in this little pocket in the back so they oh. don't tangle because I hate it when they tangle and yeah. then it takes me forever to un like undo all those yeah. knots so that's like one that I got from Stella and Dot I have a couple of those and they work really good okay and then you have that, um, um, what did the SLP wore Instagram? Right? What the SLP wore, yeah. Okay, so we get like fashion ideas for SLPs. We had a whole fashion episode, so we'll. Yeah, well, yes, we had yeah. like a fun episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Blazer and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what are your uh, go-to pieces for the SLP, do you think? Um, for me, it's always like pants that I can move in. Because a lot of times I'm like, especially with AAC and I'm doing the groups and I've got the core board and I'm holding it up and trying to hold something else up and I'm crawling around on my knees. So I have pants that can move and that can take wear and tear and like if somebody spits on them, it's not the end of the world. Right. I like stretchy pants. 
but they're still cute. I get my, um, I get a lot of pants at Target, like oh, just okay. the, um, what's the word for them? They're not, I don't wear jeans except on Friday. I would wear jeans every day if I could. I would wear leggings every day if I could, but that's not I part of them. Take, like black pants that are just like a step away from leggings. Like, yeah. like my black pants, they're just, they, they, they're practically leggings, all of them that I wear, but it just it was easier because I'm climbing on chairs like to hang all this artwork in my room or like I'm, I'm, I'm stopping kids from running places and stuff or I'm going up and down stairs all day. Right. Yeah. So I wore like a fancy pair of slacks. I wore slacks today. And I took them off immediately when I got home. <laughs> yeah, I was so uncomfortable the day that I did. Because they don't even feel the same when you sit down than when you're I know. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Yeah. And then I wear a lot of, um, like, of the nice, like, I guess they're, like, nicer t-shirts. They're just, like, a v-neck, plain, short sleeve. I think I have sensory versions, so they have to be, like, the right fabric. And the seam can't be crooked. You know how, like, they twist sometimes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I'll just wear um, layers because sometimes there's like when you're going around to different schools, you never know what temperature it's going to be. I know. And between have climate time. control with your clothes and be able to like peel off some layers. Yeah, layers yeah. are good. I like agree. my room is freezing. The hallways are warm. Most of the classrooms are like in the middle. Yeah, I so agree. It's all <laughs> different temperatures. Yeah, the stairways are always so hot, I guess, because the windows and the sun mm. just beating down in there. So yeah, I, I always have to wear layers. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we are going to go on to our next segment where we call tips or tricks. So that's usually just like a little tip or trick that you can use. It could be for, if you want to keep it fashion related, you can do a fashion one. Uh, like probably the AEC one. If you have a tip or trick for SLPs who are listening, just something that they can implement tomorrow. And that doesn't need like a ton of like planning or some sort I, yeah I do for sure like I have um for AA for AAC and actually for all of the kiddos uh, I like to have a couple of go-to apps uh -huh. on my iPad that are like my backup for if like if what I was going to do falls through or I forgot it or the kids are having a really bad day right. um, there's a couple of apps that I like to use one of them it's not free, but it's practically free. It's super cheap. It's called um, Preschool Monkey Lunchbox. Okay. Two ninety nine, I think. Okay. And that is really good for turn taking. And I use it with uh, core vocabulary for it would be like for a typically developing child. It, it's preschool, but with my kids with complex communication needs, I think I could go up to about second grade with it. And it's, I like it because it the activities are quick so you can use it for turn taking where each kiddo gets like a 30 second turn so you don't lose your whole rest of your crowd while the one kid's taking so long on their turn because you know how you gotta be like such a juggler so right. it's really good and it's also uh, the stuff that it's asking them to do is educational it's like shape matching and um, sorting so I've had that for like, I've been using that for probably five years. It's really good. Well, Maria's got it up I on see her it. phone. Yeah, it I see nice. it. They touch, says touch the heart, uh, touch the orange fruit. So you yeah. have yeah. there that they can work on. And, and a lot of times I'll use it for my kiddos, uh, the kids with autism that don't, they just want to play with it and they don't want to ever have to say anything. So then I'll take it back it's my turn and then they have to either tell me my turn or more to right. get it to me again and it's highly motivating for them yeah so i really recommend that great yeah, i like that app. i like that i'm gonna piggy off of hers okay and my tip or trick is to use a timer in that activity too oh so that's a great idea seconds, uh when it rings they have to pass it on to the next person and that's when they could say my turn your turn and that could be so difficult you might think like for that other student to wait and take their turn so if you're and I've noticed maybe they're not ready yet to just kind of sit and do nothing and wait so I'll give them like a quick little like fidget toy so at least they have something in their hands it's not as yeah. exciting as the iPad so they are still waiting but at least you know it's reducing something. Some of the frustration. so 
that's my tip or trick. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> I just kind of bounced in there, you know, so yeah, worked on that one. <laughs> so my tip or trick is, um, so this week, this could require a purchase. I was going to say don't murder anymore. Don't do that. <laughs> right. Because okay, even that. <laughs> though you said stripes are not fashionable, right. but I think they are. They are, but not. I, right. I pick stripes a lot. Or orange jumpsuits, maybe. Are no. Right? No, I don't think orange would work right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The thing about murder is jail. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. exactly. You really shouldn't even yeah. play there. Right. Anywho. So. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I interrupted you. <laughs> It's fine. Mike has a joke about about how he wants to marry me because um, people who kill their wives they get a little bit more forgiveness than people who kill their girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the news. They're like, look yeah. at this sweet innocent angel whose life was tragically cut short, and then you hear a guy like kills his wife, and they're like, God, oh, there's two sides to every story. <laughs> oh yeah, that's why it's okay if I do that. Yeah. Um, but my tip or trick is. So I recently decided to randomize prize giving in speech therapy oh. by using a prize wheel. So I did have to purchase this prize wheel and it did cost about $40, Darn. but it has increased the excitement level in my speech room from like, it's, it's insane how everyone just can't even wait to spin the wheel. Wow. So there are definitely other ways that you can figure out oh, yeah. how to randomize prize giving. This cheese is delicious. I'm sorry. Oh, it's mozzarella. I keep interrupting you right now. It's I'm fine. so excited about this I cheese. mean, you should be more excited about my prize wheel. I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so the reasons why I think it's good is, one, it's exciting. Two, we're going to be working on, like, coping with uh, disappointments uh -huh. and stuff and, like, having to, to verbalize that. Um, like, right. I'm disappointed because of this. Um, and then also the whole, like, you get what you get, but you don't get upset. Right. And then also it was just really why I did it was it was taking entirely too long for anyone to pick a prize to the point where I was like, if you don't pick now, you're leaving and that's right. it. Yeah. So, so now we spin the wheel and then I hand them the prize and then they leave and that's, it's great. And they then, had a lot of spinning the wheels at ASHA. Did, were you maybe subconsciously inspired by that it could be because yeah. i you know humans they like what? spinning wheels yeah. wheel of yeah. fortune yeah. does it make the noise when it goes around it does it goes like tick 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 yeah. tick and it's got like um the price the circle right. in the middle too so it yeah. like hypnotizes you a bit oh wow yeah i, I bought um a pack of 40 individually wrapped toothbrushes all You're of fun. the prizes that I, I know, isn't that so funny? All the prizes that I, I have, I the school purchased for me, like I just oh, put okay. in the request. But then I decided to, in addition to that, buy 40 toothbrushes and put toothbrush on there. And I just can't wait for cool. someone to land on toothbrush. <laughs> teaching proper oral care that's good yeah but then it'll be funny when they're like what yeah <laughs> you get what you get and you don't get upset yeah speaking of upset. fancy quotes and you want to uh finish off the episode with a quote of something that you like to live by something inspirational yeah i did one my quote is like it's an aac related quote but Perfect. um that it's a marathon and not a sprint. That's a good one. And it's so yeah. true. Yes. That's that's good for all of life. I like to tell yeah. myself that at parties. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> but, a good point. Yeah, last night I went to a big party and I met Macaulay Culkin. Oh, oh I saw that you posted you did? That. Yes, I woke up this morning and I was like, I met Macaulay Culkin. Like, that was what I remembered right away. That was all that was on my mind. He, he was little, really cool. No. Is he a little strange? No, completely. Like, he was very friendly and nice and regular. And everyone I told, like, had brought up how, like, he, I guess, in the past had instances of drug abuse, but no indication of that. And he was, like, super, super conversational and, like, nice. And, like, so I went up to him to be, like, I'm so sorry I'm this person, but, like, it's so cool to meet you. I'm Deborah, whatever. And I was at a party that had several um, famous people there, so it wasn't, like, and that was the only one, though, that I was, <laughs> I was like, oh, my oh. goodness, it's Kevin McAllister. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, and then he, I, I asked him to come over to my table of friends where they were not as cool as me. Oh. They were all like, oh, my goodness. And, 
mom, and then he ran away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, I got to go back to my girlfriend now. Yeah. How old is he, would you say? You know, I'm so bad at age. I asked somebody how old they were, and they were like 43, and I was like, whoa, I have no, what? I didn't even guess that. So I think he you is, look that up. I don't even know, like, yeah, like late 30s, maybe? He looks young, yeah, though. That's what I, I don't know. I, um, I also met Mark Ronson. That's, do you know who that is? Mark Ronson, was he the one who, uh, he played the Hulk, right? No, he's a music no. producer. He, Sorry. like, he, I'm he's making it. a oh. song with Miley Cyrus right now. Oh, I heard that. He was born in 1980, Macaulay Culkin. Oh. Okay. So, 38. 38. 38. Okay. Yeah. That was some good math. Let me take you guys' picture, okay? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> For Instagram. Yeah, For gram anyone. it. And yes, then did you, let's get a picture. Oh, we're going to take a picture. Yeah. Oh, now I just well, we, we sh Maybe we should end the episode and then take pictures. Oh, we? yeah, we have to yes. end the episode. So on that note. <laughs> this has been SLP's Wine and Cheese. cheese.